It's a Friday, August 11. In the headlines, the minister orders a probe into temporary closure of the Sangster International Airport. In business news, NCB Financial Group sees decline in net profit. Regionally, meeting held among small island developing states. Internationally, artificial intelligence gets a push from young people and entrepreneurs in Africa. In sports, Jamaica's table tennis national junior and senior championship. In entertainment news, Baby Sham performed at Ellen Cool J's Rock the Bells Festival in New York. This is the weekend news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gill. Transport Minister Daryl Vaz has called for a full investigation into Thursday's temporary closure of the Sangster International Airport in St. James. The closure affected 52 arriving flights. 12 of them were cancelled while some were diverted to Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston. Reports are that the incident happened due to equipment failure as well as inclement weather which affected upgrading work being carried out at the airport. Minister Vaz expressed in a statement Thursday evening his discontent with what transpired and has instructed the MBJ Airports Limited, Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority and the Airports Authority of Jamaica to each provide a detailed report of the series of events which resulted in several delayed and cancelled flights. He says a full investigation will be conducted with a view of action being taken where appropriate. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says more investments have to be made in agriculture. He says Jamaica has about 200,000 hectares of land available for farming and the country would only need to farm about 100,000 to have a successful agro-export industry. If we farm 50% of that, we're in a good place because we could export for the population that we have. Jamaica could supply all the food needs for the tourism industry in the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Cayman Islands. They are just one hour away from us. We just need a shipping barge and every week we can be sending stuff back and forth, back and forth. According to Mr. Holness, irrigation is one major challenge as only 15% of the Arab lands are irrigated. One factor is that of that 200,000 arable land that we have, Currently, we are only farming about 31,000 hectares that is irrigated. So the provision of reliable irrigation, water, to those acreages is a big challenge. The Prime Minister says the XX Valley, Southern Plains and soon-to-be-completed Pedro Plains project should help resolve the issue, but there's another challenge. It's one thing to plant the seed. It's another thing now to market it. It's another thing to find the capital to invest in it. It's another thing to bring the technology to bear. And the person who does that is the entrepreneur. The farmer and the entrepreneur don't have to be two different persons. We can train our farmers to become entrepreneurs and we can train our entrepreneurs to become farmers. According to the Prime Minister, corporations are needed in agriculture. Everybody wants to be farmer accountant, entrepreneur, technician, when what we really need to do is form corporations. We need to work together to build businesses in agriculture where people with different skills, different aptitudes and talents come together to create a business in agriculture. The Prime Minister says the AIC will be putting in place a matching grant scheme to encourage more entrepreneurial opportunities in agriculture. 
for small farmers under the Southern Plain Agricultural Development Project. This groundbreaking initiative is designed to empower and uplift small farmers by providing them with up to 80% of essential resources towards their farming enterprise. This week, Jamaica celebrated its 61st year of independence with several activities. One of those was the Mellow Go Round. The annual show features the best performances in poetry, drama, song, and dance from the JCDC's Festival of Arts. Here are some highlights courtesy of Jamaica Information Service. popular is like a pandemic only me I'm thinking never wear one girl me say no no teeth muscle wear one I didn't live in plain wings any minute now she's supposed to take off the only reason why she not take off you know I because she could have barely seen if we do it Girl, we need not eat. For go to her and ask her, I wish you were here. See, you know me. I'm go over to her and say, so go to baths. How are you here? She says she are here. Mink, yet dee. I say, Mink, yet dee. How was that? She said, Then come in a number. The higher the number, the thicker. I'm from here, the eyelash dead. See, I know I'm going to go around and start asking ask everybody what I'm wearing at the eyelash web. And this so me learn about the different eyelash them. You have wispy, wispy shot in the crease are full. Then you have volume, volume full all over. Then you have one name, fun. See, fun? I so fun long. I fun I come with you so. I find a bop, and a flop, and a flop, flop, and a bop. Then they come in a small, medium, and large. Mother, guess who they come at the way, no? Guess no? No, Lele. And you know, Lele fears challenging. Mother, one night time I'm a prep so I can't say no. I the living rat but me a look pan. Mava, stop me laughing now. Stop me laughing now, Mava. Let me tell you about the bride. Yes, see the bride. Fear eyelash, it look good. It fit her. She wear mink natural. I say, Mava, you have a table on her back named table five. If them never see them strong, the breeze with a gun with them, you would hear so fly high in the sky. Let the whole world know, let the whole world know. The whole of them round the eyelash, fever on in, in the dawning. Well, Mava, me see ya, me a go down, go try on my. Eyelash, well, muffle, give me later. Eyelash on my eyes for the whole world to see.
now for the business report with Danita Rodney. Welcome to the Business Report, I'm Denita Rodney. This week, the NCB Financial Group has reported a decline in its total net earnings for nine months leading up to June 2023. The revelation was made by Malcolm Sadler, Interim Group Chief Financial Officer at the company's investment briefing held on Thursday. The group reported consolidated net profit of $13.7 billion for the nine months to June a 12.2 billion or 47% reduction from the prior year. Despite the decline in net earnings in the current period, uh, there has been consistent quarterly improvements in the net results as we navigate the constantly shifting operating environment while executing a range of strategic initiatives. Mr. Sadler also reported that despite the decline, the company continues to focus on improving their performance. We continue to focus on improving our financial performance quarter over quarter via operational efficiency and overall customer experience and the group has been investing in world-class digital and analytics capabilities. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Thursday, August 10, the U.S. dollar sold for an average of $155.48. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $115.94. The pound sterling traded for $195.93 and the euro sold for $173.60. In JSE trading, the JSE index declined by over 2,566 points. The junior market index advanced by over 11 points. The combined market index declined by over 2,288 points and the All Jamaican Composite Index declined by over 3,625 points. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 102 stocks of which 36 advanced, 48 declined and 18 traded firm. Stocks advanced for Barita Investments Limited, Cargo Handlers Limited and Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, Access Financial Services Limited, and Blue Power Group Limited. Trading firm were 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited Verbal Preference, Elite Diagnostic Limited, and Epley 7.50% Preference Shares due 2024. The overall volume leaders were Sajikor Select Funds Limited Financial and NCB Financial Group Limited with over 3 million units and Stanley Motor Limited Ordinary Shares with over 2 million units. In regional stocks on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, Calypso Macro Index Fund was the only active security post in a volume of 70 shares. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, zero securities traded. In regional business, Barbadian Prime Minister Mia Motley says the inequity in financing is choking mitigation efforts to save the planet. Ms. Motley made the comments as Barbados and other CARICOM members held a high-level dialogue with the COP28 president-designate and the UAE Special Envoy for Climate Change. Mitigation can happen wherever it happens on Earth and we should encourage it. The reality is that the problem in the differential in the accessing of pricing for loans between the global north and the global south is what is choking our ability to have the world's ramp up to, to mitigation to save 1.5. If we can create a mechanism to unlock at least 1.5 trillion dollars in funds that will allow both from SIDS to developing countries to vulnerable countries, all countries to be able to benefit by having their people put forward the best projects capable of achieving the greatest level of mitigation, then it almost becomes a competitive environment for that pool of funds that is designed with a singular focus. It took all the views, perspectives, and advice of many people from all walks of life and from every corner of the world. We engaged with civil society, NGOs, indigenous peoples, youth, public and private sector, financiers, technologists, researchers, 
scientists, you name it. And I must say, we won't be at this point in our preparations for COP28 if it wasn't for their open and engagement, enge engaging approach in our discussions. In international business, Wall Street's main indexes closed marginally higher, giving up most early gains as investors digested the latest data on inflation and how it may affect the Federal Reserve's policy moves. The Dow, S&P 500 and NASDAQ all closed up fractionally, giving up earlier gains. Data from Thursday's Consumer Price Index report showed inflation rose by 0.2 percent in July, with an annual rate of 3.2 percent. That provided an early boost to stocks, as investors bet it could push the Fed to think about cutting interest rates early next year. But a look beyond the headline number revealed that core inflation remains sticky at 4.7 percent, tempering the initial positive sentiment. In market data for oil, oil prices gained ground on Friday amid optimistic demand forecasts from the OPEC producer group and the International Energy Agency. Brent crude was up 49 cents at $86.89 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures were up 49 cents at $83.31. And that was the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Denita Rodney. Back to you, Simone. Thanks, Denita. In regional news, news from Grenada, a regional meeting is being held ahead of the United Nations Conference on Small Island Developing States in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. GBN News has the details. Ahead of the United Nations Conference of Small Island Development States, SIDS, scheduled for next year in Antigua and Barbuda, representatives of 16 small island development states gathered in St. Vincent and the Grenadines this week to assess development progress and agree on priorities. The Caribbean SIDS, Antigua and Bermuda, Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Cuba, Dominica, Dominican Republic, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname and Trinidad and Tobago are battling unique challenges, including rising sea levels, extreme weather events and changing weather patterns that are threatening ecosystems and damaging economies. According to Kiesel Melissa Peters, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, quote, Our region is complex, but we share a special bond due to our small size and geographic positioning and our unique vulnerabilities. The effects of a changing climate and intense natural disasters, the impacts of various economic shocks and cascading impacts of global political instability are major factors on our development, end quote. The minister further stated that this is a signal movement that we must assess where we are with a clear-eyed vision for where we want to go and define how we are to get there. Small islands are in the crossfire of multiple crises. Climate change, inequality, and the economic and social repercussions of COVID-19, especially related to debt. The collapse in tourism due to the pandemic left large holes in the coffers of Caribbean islands and severely set back efforts to invest in the sustainable development goals and climate change adaptation and mitigation. SIDS are responsible for only 0.2% of global carbon emissions, and yet they suffer the most from the impacts of climate change. The constant cycle of disaster and recovery leaves SIDS weakened and unable to implement adequate resilience measures. These countries are also large ocean states, and 97% of their territory is sea rather than land. For example, the exclusive economic zone of the Bahamas comprises of 654, 715, square kilometers and is approximately the size of Germany and Italy together. As stewards of so much of the world's ocean, it is noted that a sustainable future for the planet relies on a renewed strengthened partnership between all island nations and international community. In Barbados, the owners of public service vehicles have committed to providing buses that can accommodate people with disabilities. That is according to the chairman of the Advisory Committee on Persons with Disabilities, Edmund Hinkson. In addition to what the minister said in terms of 
Um, the government's policy now that every bus, every new bus and electric, of course, will have accommodation for mobility challenged persons. We would have met last Friday morning at the ministry with the private sector um, transport associations, Mr. Roy Raphael and his associations. Uh, you know, he reached out to us recently about bringing in buses um, with government subsidy that they're getting and that some of these buses would accommodate as well persons with disabilities would be retrofitted to that effect. I cannot preempt what the cabinet is going to agree upon, but we know we're taking it to cabinet and asking cabinet to agree to find something to give caregivers. Now what, what is that going to be? I cannot say. But I do know that we have to find something to be able to give caregivers. And we also have to find a support system. The other thing is that the Prime Minister has asked me, and we're now looking at it actively, to find some respite facility so that you could take um, the persons who are in need of care somewhere during the day and allow yourselves to have a break. So that is going to be one of our short-term achievements for sure. In international news, the United Nations says artificial intelligence will play a role in improving health care, education, and creating jobs in Africa. Startups and students are embracing the technology, but the UN warns there are many challenges ahead. Al Jazeera has more. Team Mali has a problem. The algorithm that these university students have built is failing to connect with their robot, and time is running out. They're in Senegal competing against students from across Africa. It's an annual event started in 2015 with a mission to promote and develop artificial intelligence built by young people across the continent. The challenge this year is to show that their software can guide a robot in a field while identifying weeds among crops. Samuel is a fourth year mechanical engineering student from Nigeria. He started coding and developing algorithms when he was just 13. Um, the more you learn how to solve problems, the better you become at thinking. And from there you can now start coding. From coding you can now start building. From building you can now start implementing and deploying. So you become very successful. The United Nations says artificial intelligence is fundamental to achieving its sustainable development goals in Africa. But there are huge challenges including a lack of relevant technical skills, inadequate infrastructure and insufficient investment. We want Africa to be part of the uh, overall innovation uh, map of the world and we want also to be part of uh, people that are building the future. The tech startup firm Concrete sits on a dusty back street in the Senegalese capital Dakar. They've built an artificial intelligence that has the potential to change millions of lives across the continent. So for the purpose of showing you how this works, Babakar here is pretending to be a potential entrepreneur anywhere in Africa. And the AI that the company has developed is asking Babakar a series of questions, including what his passions are, what his budget is, where he's from, what his catchment area is, and what his time frame is for potentially starting this business. And in just 45 seconds, it's going to come up with pretty much an entire business plan. One of the biggest challenges the company faces is so-called scaling up, which involves a lot of data and computing power in areas of Africa where that may not be technologically possible. The company goal is clear. To be part of a world where there is an entre a successful entrepreneur in every household, mainly in Africa. In sports, Jamaicans are being encouraged to come out and support the Jamaica Table Tennis Association 2023 National Junior and Senior Championships. It's set to begin today, Friday, August 11, with action at the National Indoor Sports Center. The competition is set to commence at 9 each morning with the conclusion on Sunday. This season's edition will showcase more than 270 entries across events. It will feature several overseas-based Jamaican players. In other sporting news, the positions on the Trinidad and Tobago Premier Football League Tier 2 point standings have had significant impact in this inaugural season. Here's Wayne Cunningham to explain. The championship of the Trinidad and Tobago Premier Football League Tier 2 will be decided by a playoff round which comes after the competition ends 
on the 23rd of August. That playoff round will only feature the top six teams as of August 23rd. As it stands today, that would be FC Phoenix, Queen's Park Cricket Club, Police, Harlem Strikers, San Fernando Giants, and the Defense Force. Mathematically, Betel FC is the only team out of contention for a playoff spot at this point. Time now for the entertainment news with Alicia Steele. Hey there, welcome back to PBCJ's E! News, your one-stop spot for all the latest and greatest entertainment news. I'm your host, Alicia, and I'm here to make your day even more entertaining. Soca artist Michelle Montana was awarded the key to the city of Kingston in Jamaica. Swiss Beats brought Baby Sham on stage to perform at LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Festival in New York and all 12 Sky View suites for Chris Brown's concert in Jamaica have been sold out. Stay tuned for more on these updates. On Jamaica's Independence Day, Trinidadian soca star Michelle Montana was presented with the key to the city of Kingston. The award was presented by Mayor Delroy Williams in recognition of Montana's long and successful career in music, which has had a positive impact on fans across the Caribbean and the world. Montana is also a friend of Jamaica and has supported many local charities and community organizations. He shared that he started his education in Jamaica and he lived here as a child. Hip-hop producer Swiss Beats calls out veteran dancehall artist Sham to perform his signature style at LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Festival in New York on August 5th, 2023. The festival, which primarily focused on hip-hop, welcomed the inclusion of reggae and dancehall as emphasized by American record producer Swiss Beats. Sham performed his hit song Vitamin S and expressed gratitude to Swiss Beats for the opportunity. The festival also featured renowned artists such as Ludacris, Queen Latifah, Run DMC, Big Daddy Kane, Salt and Pepper, Redman, and Sick Rick. Sham's cameo appearance delighted the festival goers. It was good. Despite the initial backlash over the high price of the Skyview Suite for Chris Brown's concert in Jamaica, all 12 suites have been sold out. The suites cost 1.5 million Jamaican dollars each, which is about US $10,000. The organizers of the concert, Solid Agency, said that they are still selling Tier 2 tickets and cabanas. They are expecting over 50,000 patrons to attend the concert, which will also feature Sean Kingston, TJ, Ding Dong, Idonia, and Byron Messiah. The concert is a part of the BZR Weekend, a 72-hour event with five different events. As we bid farewell to another fantastic episode of PBCJ's E! News, we want to extend a virtual hug and express our immense gratitude to our amazing viewers. Thanks, Alicia. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. Have a great weekend.